Uh, it's great to see you in person. Uh, I must admit that uh, this is my first contact with live audience since 2020, so it's exciting but a bit stressful as well. Um, first, uh, I would like to start with a disclaimer, uh, because uh, most of the presentations on this conference or in any other gaming conference are full of pictures, of print screens, of graphics, and unfortunately mine is not, uh, because uh, I've got only 16 words for you. Uh, 16 words to show how simple and how important trade secret protection is. So I, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I'll skip uh, the introduction of myself and let's cut to the chase. Mm, I'll be talking about trade secrets, uh, which are, in my opinion, the best instrument to, to protect your data, to protect your information, and most of all, to protect your ideas. Uh, as you're probably aware, the appraisal or the valuation of information and ideas uh, isn't exact, exact science. Uh, it's, it's hard to put a number uh, uh, behind the, the information or data, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, information and data are one of most valuable commodities in the gaming industries. And so, I'm certain that uh, most of you in here uh, gather or, and acquire informations that are worth uh, tens of thousands or uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And rest of you, rest of you, got the knowledge and data worth millions. I think uh, some of you might not be aware of it. And uh, if, if this value would be in cash, so you've got one hundred thousand dollars or uh, or million dollars. You'll do everything to protect it. You will invest. You will hire advisors, consultants. Uh, maybe put something in a bank if you're not afraid of the inflation. But uh, the question is: uh, Are you protecting your information with with the same care? Uh, I've met a lot of companies that are not, unfortunately, and. That's why this presentation. And second uh, important question is, do you want to protect it? Do you want to protect it with care? If yes, uh, I've, I will try to, to help you with that. And to, to grasp this, uh, this topic better, uh, let's imagine that you or your company invented idea of game concept for, for a new great title full of sexy USPs. Or, for example, invented a monetization scheme for simulators or any other genre. Monetization through NFTs, through some uh, events in esports, or uh, monetization through metaverse. Or maybe you invented uh, some instruments to optimize, to optimize source code, to optimize graphics, or to optimize the whole uh, game design process. Uh, for example, uh, in the way that uh, there's no room for crunch in there. These and many other ideas are, uh, are potentially worth big bucks a lot of money. And so, um, you would definitely want to protect it. But uh, there's a problem with the protection, because, because uh, IP rights aren't suited, uh, aren't tailored to, to protect the ideas. As you may know, as, and uh, as you probably hear even on this conference yesterday, uh, the copyright doesn't protect the ideas. On the other hand, patents. Uh, patents wouldn't protect most of the ideas I mentioned before. 
uh, in most of the cases it would be unreal and if uh, is uh, possible uh, it will be very very costly to acquire international protection and uh, it will take a lot of time also uh, patenting uh, is time limited so who are you gonna call then ghostbusters uh, trade secrets. Uh, trade secrets is this instrument that you need to protect this kind of ideas. Uh, to, to acquire protection, uh, the three conditions must be met by, by the information you want to protect, by the da data you want to protect, by the idea you want to protect. So, firstly, uh, it must be confidential. So, uh, not known or not accessible to, to the people from the industry. Uh, that's why, for example, if, if you published your uh, game idea on Reddit or uh, revealed something yesterday on this conference during your speech, it cannot be trade secreted. But any other information can be, if it's confidential. Second condition. Uh, the information must be must have commercial value. This value can be uh, potential, uh, but it has to be somehow valuable to. Uh, you you need to you need to have this possibility to to use it in business and to uh, to have this advantage connected with with the information, and the third. Uh, third condition, uh, reasonable steps. So trade secret holder must manifest reasonable steps to keep the information secret. What does it mean? Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. But for now, uh, if these three conditions are, are met uh, with, uh, with your actions and with uh, the character of the information or data, the protection is working. The, you've got your protection. Mm. <clears throat> uh, this protection may last uh, indefinitely, so there's no time limit on it. Uh, also, it costs uh, close to nothing. Uh, and uh, the third important thing is that, that it's almost international uh, because uh, if you generate the trade secret in, in Poland, it will be protected in the same way in the European Union, uh, in states. There are some differences in India. Uh, also, there are big differences uh, in Russia, but who cares about Russia now? Mm. So this protection is uh, is easy, easy to reach. It's cheap, and it's uh, 360 degrees. So it seems perfect for the ideas, and uh, maybe too perfect. So you might ask, where's the catch? And the catch is in the reasonable steps condition uh, I've mentioned before. Why? Uh, because a trade secrets protection is a little bit like playing Tetris. Uh, you can play for hours, days, months, years even. You can accumulate the points, the value, uh, but it works as long as you stay focused. And if you stop focusing, even for a little while, the blocks came down, will ca come down, and uh, the game is over. So it's almost the same with, uh, with trade secrets, because this reasonable steps uh, requirement is uh, the need to, to manifest that you are focusing on keeping this information secret. It may demand uh, adequate contracts like NDAs, uh, maybe some internal regulations, uh, procedures. 
also IT measures, uh, IT safeguards, uh, maybe some physical measures as well. If you've got uh, the paper uh, documentation, you will need safes and uh, key cards in your office. So to, you will need to limit access uh, to, to the information just to the people that you want to give access to. Uh, because in general, reasonable steps uh, are uh, the actions uh, that are aiming into uh, limiting uh, any unauthorized access to the information. Mm. The bigger the company, uh, the, the more needs to be done. And uh, there's one general pro problem with it, uh, because uh, there's no governmental body, there's no office that will tell you that uh, you did enough, uh, you, you took enough reasonable steps and you, you've got trade secret. Uh, you must analyze it internally uh, within your company, with your advisors. Uh, to, to help you with this problem, to address this problem, uh, you may treat it like a game uh, where, where you score points for, for every action, for every measure you took uh, to keep uh, the information secret. The more points you've got, the more uh, certain you can be that the, your steps are reasonable and uh, the protection is working. But, there's one big but. It, it takes only one, one negative point in this game, one wrong step uh, to lose the protection. Even though the information was very valuable, was core to your business, uh, if you don't care for just a while, you may lose it all. Mm, unfortunately, I've encountered few situations like this. Uh, in all of these stories, uh, companies and individuals who invented some valuable ideas uh, were not aware of the principles of trade secrets protection. And so they were coming too late for, for help. Uh, too late because uh, previously they forgot to um, forgot the confidentiality clause in in one of the contracts, or or they used some inadequate templates uh, when uh, when signing the contract with uh, business partner, with subcontractor, or with employee, and so. Uh, their partners or, or employees, uh, as an effect, could could use their their ideas, uh, make business on it, and uh, not share profits. So, uh, and it was legal, <laughs> uh, and all of these stories have uh, have come on title to to paraphrase Peter Thiel, one to zero. So, what a waste. And all of the actors involved in, in these stories uh, were on the wrong side of a thin red line between success and failure. And uh, I really, really hope that you will be always on the right side of, of this line. Uh, but in order to be there, please take care of your secrets and do it for real, like, like Mr. Yoda said. Thank you very much. Uh, if, if you've got any questions, uh, I can answer in them now, or I will be around uh, after the presentation. If you want to, if you want to chat. Can you give us some examples of uh, situations where this happened? Like, uh, what are the 
types of trade secrets? What are their specific? What are the types of, uh, excuse me? Uh, trade secrets, like. Trade secrets. Yeah. So, so the ideas I've mentioned, for yes. example, the game concept is the trade secret. A lot of things uh, that were the topics of presentation yesterday, like uh, pre-production Bible or or the, the processes that you've got inside your company, or the data uh, used um, to, uh, to analyze how gamers are acting. If they are secret, they are trade secrets. Thank you. Um, another question. Uh, it seems that uh, this is a matter of discipline, of personal discipline, to be able to protect your data. Is there any tips and tricks uh, how to develop this type of skill? Excuse me, to develop... Uh, uh, discipline, like uh, it is a matter of discipline to be able to keep the trade secret, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, so uh, inside the company, uh, you need to create some ecosystem. Uh, it's made mostly through the training, the training of the employees, so uh, they are aware that it's not the corset on them. Uh, it's not the legal, legal uh, BS. It's very, very important thing for the company to, to keep this information secret because they may be core to the business, so core to their position in this company, to uh, their money uh, acquiring through working in this company. And so it's not only uh, the question of the procedures, but mostly the question of uh, persuading everyone involved that this thing is important, because it is important. And uh, I've met a lot of uh, problems with, uh, with this thing, with uh, persuading the employees uh, that uh, uh, it's not some problematic thing. It's the thing that you need to uh, act like musketeers, one for all, and uh, and so the training is the answer, the main answer for it. Are there any resources you can share, some type of I don't know knowledge regarding the process itself? Because it feels that uh, it's uh, either a custom uh, situation where you, as an employer, develop your own way of uh, dictating this type of uh, restrictions, or there's some standardization to this process. Uh, in order to to persuade the the employees that it's a good thing, it should be tailor made. It should be um, uh, introduced this the system after analysis of your uh, individual company and uh, how it works. Uh, what's uh, the you know general idea of, of employees, uh, how they are feeling in the company, and without it, it will be the corset I've mentioned. So, so uh, the, using the templates or some set procedures uh, isn't the best answer. Uh, it may uh, lead to the wrong way, uh, the wrong way, uh, the wrong alley, because uh, uh, it will, in some cases, some instances, uh, make the, the managers, the top uh, tier of, of the company, calm that everything is okay because they introduced some, some good template. But uh, if uh, the employees aren't on, the aren't on board, uh, it will not work uh, in, some, some, in some time, in some period of time. Um, do you recommend uh, doing this uh, right after or during the recruitment process or can this be a recurring uh, occasion where you remind everyone about the regularities regarding trade secrets? Uh, I think both. So, uh, so every new employee should be made aware uh, that there are these rules and uh, maybe there should be some discussion with him if he's okay with it uh, as a part of the process. And also it's important to, to renew the rules with uh, the, the standing team. So, uh, so the answer is both. Thank you. Thank you.
do we have some more time or okay so uh, are there any more questions I, I, I think that <laughs> okay this this microphone uh, in here is kind of intimidating <laughs> Um, you mentioned that you met situations where everything went downhill from one to zero. Uh, do you have any examples? Uh, yes, but uh, they are trade secreted, in <laughs> fact. <laughs> um, I cannot reveal the specifics. Uh, if, if I could, I, I will tell you, of course. But, but maybe just in general broad terms? Uh, uh, one, one of them, uh, it, was, uh, it was the game concept. Uh, it was developed by, uh, in fact, by a gamer. Um, and in this game concept, there was uh, really interesting ideas for the monetization of the simulator games. Uh, the monetization that could uh, benefit not only this game, but could be beneficial for, for the whole industry of simulators. And, and so uh, there wasn't NDA when, when he started the, the negotiations. And that's why he lost this monetization idea. Um, so um, it seems that you are pointing out that every discussion that you have should be driven by some type of document, like document signed before having a discussion. Because there are situations where you meet with fellow developers like here and you want to discuss, maybe you're excited about your idea, you know, maybe you want to draw other people into your idea. Do you have some, I don't know, some advice regarding this? Uh, yeah, to, 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 to make a list of things that you, you can reveal and to keep the secret sauce or to, to identify the secret sauce and keep it secret for as long as you are not starting the, the project. So, so uh, in this uh, example you mentioned, uh, you can uh, invite people on board without uh, revealing everything. Uh, and uh, you should analyze it beforehand, what's the secret sauce. So thank you very much. I will be around if you if you want to ask more questions and and chat as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.